All righty. Good morning, y'all. It's 5.15.23, and today we're going to go ahead and just jump right into our trade ideas. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the good old NASDAQ, as we love. And so right now, we're looking overall on the NASDAQ. And price seems to be bullish. So the expectation here would be that we want to go ahead and run that particular high. And then, of course, you know, eventually to come higher. So let's zoom out, actually. Let's do some multi-time frame analysis here. So previously, we saw price come up, right? Come up, come up. And we finally broke down here. So in order for us to turn bullish on the weekly and continue bullish we, we actually do want to see this price be ran which is 13 7 22 and again i just want to go down to a lower time frame right we want to validate that so if we go up even higher well then we could see that this is probably just a reaccumulation in a sense meaning lows breaking lows to break highs retest to come higher, right? So we're gonna continue to go down. So let's look for some short-term scalp sort to get in on this bullish action. So we see prices breaking higher, higher. So we ultimately wanna see something like this on the daily, but let's continue to go down and let's see if we can find any other reasons to go ahead and get into a particular trade. So yeah, we have this, this this area down here. I probably say this is the refinement here. We wanna see price come down into there. Although, if you see here, right, we have price breaking up here. We did see this mitigate the open and it started to come up and it looks like it's starting to come down. So we wanna see Mm, let's zoom in a bit a bit further to see what else we can see here. Yeah, so if we're looking here, all, although on the four hour time frame, we did see this come in on this large, this area right here, right? Just so you can see what I'm talking about, right? This is actually four hours right here. These two candles are four hours. And you can see that it actually did mitigate the higher point of this four hour candle time frame but we did have this move in here where it just mitigated the open and it continued up and so we could look to get long from there as well so let me go ahead and go back up to the daily go ahead and move this in a bit all right so we could see something like this right something like this and of course when it comes down into these areas we'd want to validate it or confirm but let's continue to go down let's see if we can go ahead and refine these even further because we saw this large move up we saw it pull back really aggressively then we saw a break up here and it wicked up a lot. There's a lot of wiki price action until we finally get somewhere in here. So we could potentially see, because when we're down here on the one hour, it doesn't look as good. We see a 50%, and then we see this shoot all the way down and then come up. So we could be potentially looking now Right, you have lows, right? Break those lows and then sweep those last lows to ultimately go higher. I think I like this, this area a little bit better. And then we go down to the 30 minute and that looks crisp, really crisp. So what we're waiting for now, ultimately, let's see here. If it did run this, then we'd probably look for some buys on the lower time frames to continue higher. So we'll just go ahead and remove those. 
right? Because this is all based on context. We saw in the higher time frame on the weekly, we saw that price came up. It looked like it was doing some reaccumulation lows, breaking lows, breaking lows, right? Let's go ahead and go back over that because this is important, right? We want to we have a context and a model in our head. So we see it just going just up, 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 right? And really, you could argue it came all the way from down in here. You could say here, but we did. We know price doesn't always respect everyone's zones, and this is the actual NASDAQ, right? So the top 100 companies in America, so effectively the U.S. economy. So when we're looking at this, we have lows, breaking lows, and then now we want to see a break of a high to continue bullish, right? Reaccumulation here. So again, we'll go back down to the 30 minute, and we want to look for ways to go ahead and get long because that's overall what the bias uh, that I have for the, this particular trend. So anyways, we could say this on the 30 minute potentially. The only thing I don't like about this zone is that you don't, you really want to see a break above here before you start looking for anything in here. This is really, in my opinion, ug ugly whimsical price action. So let's go ahead and look a bit lower. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we just want to be patient, right? We want to be patient. We want to see it come into here. So we're just going to go ahead and put an alert here. Oops. One second. All right. Really need to go through and clean up a lot of these notes. All right. There we go. All right, and we're just going to leave that there. Let's go ahead and look at the euro, see if there's anything that looks good here. Uh, I mean, we have this wick above. Here is this very wicky. I mean, all in all, though, we're looks like we're pretty bullish here. Yeah, we're, we have this large area in here. But if we're looking on the daily time frame, <clears throat> we could, the only thing I don't like really is like when you see the body closes, the body closes, yeah, I guess technically they do have some body closes in there. So you could say this here is valid for buys, right? Last down move for the move. So this is the MB. Looks like we're almost about 50% into it. Yeah, so we could be looking, looks like that got mitigated, that got mitigated. I'm not really seeing any good zones. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Mmm, breaks. I don't know. I'd want to see it reaccumulate in a way, so I, you know, you, you say, see these lows starting to form, and we want to sweep them, and we want to sweep again, maybe for 50%, if we're looking at this entire area on the higher time frame, which is the daily, which is four times six, right? So, four candles. If each one of these are six hours, four candles, right? Makes up a day. And obviously, we look back pretty far, so this is about... March. And I said pretty far, right? We're looking here now. So in respect to. So if you look here, we have this break. You could say there's just this large area down here. But if we saw it reaccumulate, we are already expecting it to be bullish. So for instance, 
we see that here, right? Then we say, okay, well, our highs, right? So we could say here, 2.0. So 2.0 demand, we're in here now. The only issue is, is you see how price just came down really quickly. I think there's still some room for it to actually run. So we're in here now. Let's go ahead and continue to zoom in a bit and see what's going on. Because we ultimately want to run these highs, right? We want to run these highs. It's where we want to go back to. We are in a nice little zone right here. I probably would want to see these lows sweeped and then see what, what price is looking like at that time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say possible accumulation. And it probably should be reaccumulation. There we go. And again, we talked about this before in a previous video. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and link that somewhere. But basically, this is Wyckoff. And we're looking at accumulations, right? Distributions. And then we're looking for reaccumulations, redistributions. So the I idea really is, is that on the higher time frame, right? We have a price wanting to go in a particular direction, and we can look on the lower time frame to see where a where folks who have a bit more sway of the market are reaccumulating to form bigger positions to ultimately go in the direction that they want. And so the idea would be is that you see this large move up here, right? So we have to sell to buy, but we have protected lows, meaning these are positions where, again, people who have a larger sway of the markets, they've gotten into these positions. And obviously, if they go past these positions, those positions would be negative, right? So you have the larger position traders, which it makes sense when it comes to currencies, right? Because at the end of the day, the point of a currency is to remain liquid. And so you want to keep it at a certain price level, relative to, I say, global economic conditions. And so obviously you can, if you have a lot, you can move markets as you see fit to make sure really the, these prices stay relatively stable. So it's the same concept, right? This is, this is pretty much a stock theory, but it's the same concept because ultimately you don't want to run below what will make you negative at a point until you can actually get out of that position and some for more of a formidable profit. Now, the question really might be is, do we ultimately expect the euro to go back up to a dollar ten? And I'd ask, well, I mean, we've seen it there before, right? And this is pretty much the lowest it's ever been. So, yeah, if we're looking at historical data, right? But this is probably not going to tell the whole tale. There's probably a bit more data on some other chart somewhere. My point in explaining that is, is that the theory behind these trades is that there's a particular area where, again, people who hold a large sum of these particular currencies do not want to get below. So I, I do want to see it sweep these lows, though, before ultimately continuing higher to remain bullish, right? To ultimately run a dollar ten, right? Dollar ten and nine. Uh, 95 pips. So we're going to go ahead and leave that there. We got to the alert. Let's go ahead and go to gold. All right, let's go to the daily. <clears throat> so the interesting thing is we saw it come close. We saw it come close to this level. We were looking at uh, last week, right? All time highs for gold or oh, about two weeks ago. I was gone last week. So we see it coming close to this $2,075 level. And I think ultimately it's going to end up running that level. We're going to have a slight little pullback, but we want to see it go ahead and move to all-time highs for gold. So 
realistically, it's probably might be a reaccumulation here with the expectation that we do actually have a nice, nice little zone in there on the four hour. We can see it come and tap into here, right? As we reaccumulate and boom, break above, come back and retest in here somewhere. So let's go ahead and draw that out. So it's not right. We come down, we see it boom, boom, potentially break up, bam. Right, hold on, let's uh, bam, right? We'll get better at drawing these, right? The more you do it, the better, the cleaner it becomes, right? Boom, bam, right? That's what we wanna see. Something like that, right? So I'd be looking to buy, buy in around 1990, but we'll see, right? We wanna, when it comes down to this area, we wanna confirm, we wanna make sure that we're seeing those double breaks to the, to the top side, right? So when it comes into this particular area, as we're, as I'm saying it, it could potentially do, right? Something like that, right? We see it break up, maybe come back and retest, and then ultimately run, right? What we want to see is, right when it comes in here, we want to see something like this, right? And when we see something like this, what we end up doing is we buy stop, right? We make sure we put a stop loss here because we're going to risk 0.5% of the capital. And then we want to see it run, right? Now, again, how I like to trade is this is going to be on a much lower time frame, So it's not going to be on the four hour, maybe something like down in here. We see it come into here and it might be something smaller like this. And then we see price come back in here, right? So we see it take off, it breaks there, and I'm looking like something like this, and then we see price do something like this, right? Boom, boom, break, break, right? So it might be something like this. We see that first break here, right, in that form. Then we see the validation of that move Right, and so I'm, I would probably take something like that. Because it gives me a lot more room to run, right? Because you see this and you're like, okay, well, that's a, we just turned a one to like three to one to eight, right? Just because we validated and confirmed our entry based on a particular set of ideals, right? The context of the actual market we know it wants to continue to run higher. I mean, we're very close. And you look at the total economic conditions, it just makes sense at this point. Now again, those are just varying factors. What I like to do is I like to see the models and we see is price accumulating in this area. Okay, great, boom, takes off. We see break one and we wanna buy stop break two, continue up, you know, we wanna manage it. So you see price, starting to run a bit, right? Maybe you see it not has a nice little burst, right? Maybe it burst up to here. We might say one to two, right? It gets to one to two. We wanna make move to break even. So now this trade is risk-free, right? Zero risk. Maybe it pulls back a bit, right? And it continues up. Maybe we wanna trail that stop, right? Boom, trail that stop. And it keeps going, right? Maybe. Maybe even at one to six, maybe it starts to pull back a good amount. Or maybe we just say at one to six, hey, let's take off 50%, right? And we trail the stop, trail the stop, right? So risk management, again, as we're continuing to grow as traders and as we continuously look at these markets, as we continuously test, forward test, back test, this is where the refinement of our actual strategies and the way that we actually see how these markets move, based on the variety of different factors that we choose to believe in because ultimately it's a set of beliefs that we want to validate by seeing if we win or lose. And that's why we use stop losses because these ideas, we don't want them to be invalid all the way down to the bottom. Now, of course, how many markets do that? Not very many. The ones that are very illiquid. Gold's not that. But my point is, is that you want to set the stopping point for your particular idea. Anyways, outside of all of that, that's all I'm gonna go ahead and break down. We got our alerts, we got what we're looking for here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and actually, I forgot to put this demand zone here. Boom. And we're going to go ahead and end it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy trading and uh, continue to sharpen that saw. Talk to you later. Peace.